You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. HRN is food radio supported by you. Learn more at heritageradionetwork.org. This episode is brought to you by 818 Tequila, delicious and smooth tequila, made in harmony with the earth. 818 Tequila, imported by 818 Spirits, Manhasset, New York. 40% alcohol by volume, drink responsibly. Welcome to Pizza Quest. I'm Peter Reinhardt, a man on a never-ending search for the perfect pizza. This show is the audio version of the Pizza Talk YouTube series, where I engage in interesting conversations with some of the country's greatest pizza makers and other artisans. Thanks for joining me on this quest. Welcome to Pizza Quest. I'm Peter Reinhardt, and uh, welcome back. We're we're having a yet another exploration in our never-ending search for the perfect pizza. And today, I'm with my friend, Tommy Garnick. I knew, first, when I was first introduced to you, to you Tom, I was, it was Chef Tommy. And then, uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time together at Pizza Expo. We did some work, I think, in, in Denver was where I first got yeah. to work with you at um, at Fire Within's uh, uh, Woodfire University. And you were, you were running the ovens and cooking amazing food. And you also had a great pizzeria. Uh, and, and so uh, we did a session with Pizza Brava when it was located out in Denver, I think on the main drag. But by the time I got, you know, got to know you a little bit better, you had already opened a brick and mortar place uh, in Denver, still called Pizza Brava, right? Yep. Was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then that was, uh, you know, probably the, the best wood fire style pizza, Neapolitan style in, in Denver at that time. But now you're in a whole new place. You've moved. You've you've relocated to Tucson, Arizona. So, Tommy, why don't you catch us up a little bit um, and tell us? And, and then we'll talk a little bit later about the um, the prize winning pizza that you made for that <laughs> pizza competition, which which kind of put you on the national map. Everyone knew about you at that point. Although I think That's by right. then a lot of the, the the main players in the pizza world who all gather at the what I call the tribal gathering at Pizza Expo, you were already, you know, friends with most of them. But suddenly you were like front page news in all the on all the trade journals. So we'll get to, we'll get to that though. But first, <laughs> tell us a little bit about you know th- this long journey that you've been on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me on, Peter. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, if, uh, it's been a very fortunate journey. Um, we started out in Denver, um, you know. So when I got started in the business, I got started with a mobile wood fired oven. Um, and it was just something, you know, when I first got into it, I didn't have kind of that, that passion that comes and the more that I've, I've researched this and just kind of the ideas, it's, it's kind of that it grew on me as it became. So I bought one of the fire within mobile oven. Um, I was actually going to college at the, or going to school at the time. Um, and I had just gotten out of the Navy. Um, so I was just kind of getting settled, decide what to do. And I was just looking for something that would get me outside, get to learn the community, get to learn the events, the things that were happening, kind of the pulse of the city at the time. So I bought one of these mobile ovens and I was like, well, how bad can it be? Let's just go out and have some fun and do some music festivals and breweries. So was this like your first culinary adventure or were you already working as a cook or a chef? No, I mean, this is my my first professional foray into uh, into the restaurant, into food, uh-huh. into it's kind of Crash Course 101. Um, you know, I think my, my passion came much younger and I didn't really connect the dots when I first got into pizza, you know, but I grew up very multiculturally. I grew up uh, in Wyoming of all places, but I grew up eating uh, Mexican and Indian food. Uh-huh. So these like wow. the glorious spices of, of Southern India, the really rustic traditions of Northern Mexican cuisine and kind of peppered in with the classic middle Midwest uh, American fare. So yes. my palate was kind of, you know, it was, it was, brought in from a lot of directions and a lot of cultures and a lot of traditions that I didn't at the time understand that, you know, what that was kind of imprinting my DNA at a very young age. Um, you know, so I'd always lo- had an affinity for food and always had an affinity for kind of the, the connections that food brings with people. Um, you know, but like I said, when I got into the, the, the pizza business, it was, it was just kind of, I was wanting something fun to do in the summers, make some quick cash Something I could put away when the winter came back in so I could get back into my studies and go back into school. And right. Like yeah. so many people, it was more of a side hack. It was uh, before, yeah. before it became an obsession. Yeah, yeah, but yeah exactly. It was kind of, you know, what the kids call now a side hustle, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, it, and it just kind of, it rapidly grew from there. You know, we we were fortunate and it, it was wildly successful at the get, 
get go. Um, you know, so we had the one 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 uh, oven, oven, and then uh, my original business partner David Bradvika, um, formerly of Bradley Pizza as well. We had uh, kind of combined forces. Um, so we had the fixed location, like you had said, it was the pedestrian mall in downtown Denver. Right. So we are at David, the base. David's oh, one we had on. Yeah, David's the one we filmed on videos on, on, yeah. on the in the early Pizza Quest video webisodes. So if anyone's uh, you know watching and want to go to see those. You can see the original location, and, and it was a, it was a really cool spot because it was in this like pedestrian mall in downtown Denver um, under a clock tower, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it was the the DNF clock tower, so it was built in the late 1800s. So had a lot of kind of prominence and history, and we had this little cute. It was a little outdoor bistro cafe, so we had about 60 seats out there. We had beer, wine, just kind of a very charming, romantic. One of the uh, one of the the mobile wood fired ovens on a trailer, so just kind of this, you know, you would walk by, you would smell it from half the mall away, you yeah. would see the fire, it was just this beautiful interaction of what had happened, and you know, so we 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 had the two ovens, and we were doing more catering than we could possibly handle. So next thing you know, we had four mobile ovens, <laughs> and we were just, I mean, it, we were bursting at the seams. We, you know, we were doing. 70 80 weddings a year we were doing a couple hundred parties we were doing dozens i mean we were yeah i mean i think at a in a busy week we would do like 16 to 16 to 20 events in a week on a crazy busy week and that's with one one uh, at least one of your ovens planted permanently no exactly so yeah so that was pretty much three rotating ovens um, wow. you know so we had a, a stationary kitchen um and that was just kind of a, a it was fun chaos i mean it was yeah. just uh, a lot that, that was um, going on he was making when David did a video with us. He did a uh, a killer porchetta sandwich oh, yeah. of some sort. That was yeah, that was great stuff. So I imagine the the catering just sort of start to get bigger and bigger and bigger for you. Yeah, I mean we 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 kind of started as just doing like pizza salad, and next thing you know, our catering menu we would cook anything. I mean it was sixty items long. We we're doing chickens and uh, you know kind of the, the quintessential classic like sausage and meatballs, but everything had a, a wood fired kiss to it. You know, so we would yeah. play with an element of the fire, whether it was using the smoke or using ashes like a seasoning salt or kissing, kind of finishing the ingredients in the oven, or you know, so it's kind of a fun but challenging because it's you know there, there's a difference between the romance and the nuance of being a chef and like. Yeah. making this beautiful plate for 12 tables. And then there's a the difference of how do I take and feed 200 people in a timely manner, but still take those basic ideas. So you really had to learn the techniques of, of kind of that high volume production as a chef and how, to, how can we take the romance yeah. and execute for much larger, you know, cause we, I think we were doing weddings at 200, 275 people. We did corporate events for like 5,000 people. Always so with we just, fire? Was that was it always, all, wood fire? always, think, always no commercial ovens in the background? No, yeah. I mean, we, we might use some, some of the, uh, the, the, the off camera flare to, uh, to get things ready so we could do uh, the, 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 the bam, you know, once we get on camera. Right. Uh, but yeah, the, I mean, we, we had the commissary. It's a full functioning commissary. I mean, it was a, oh, it was a large cool. facility. So we, that was kind of our back of the house. And, but our execution on site was always, well, always with the wood fired ovens, cool. always, always in an outdoor kick, cooking environment. So it was a, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun, a lot of work, a lot of uh, kind of all the journeys you could ever possibly imagine. But so those was, ovens were really like your teachers. They were, you were in the deep end and had to figure it out as you went. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of, you know, I, I learned from, from journeys. I learned from stories. I learned from connecting with great people, but most importantly, I learned by trial by fire. You know, there's yeah. something, the romance of, of that fire teaches you a lot as long as you're willing to listen. And, you know, and then I think from there, once we started to take a step back, then we really started to jump in and like, that's when that passion started to set in. And I was like, Oh, it's not just, you know, even on a pizza, it's not just flour, water, salt, yeast. Like there's a dimension of time. There's a dimension of artistry and there's a dimension of the journey of the story that I think, and that's for me, a great chef is a synergy of all those things together where the sum is greater than the, is greater than the parts. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's, but a lot of that is, you know, each chef and that's what makes us all distinctly different is we're telling our story where we're, we're telling it through an edible art form, you know, cause yeah. I look yeah. at like great chefs are artists, right. But they're, they're sharing you on this journey of tradition and culture and perspective and, and expectations all in this one place, because we're all formed and shaped by food and by the love of food and by the connection of food, even in the most primal sense, you know, and that's where my, my journey really took off was understanding that, you know, I came up with my, my theory that, you know, the, 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 the pizza is kind of ambiguous with the, the, the story, the historical reference of us as people uh -huh. and really looking at, you know, kind of that, 
that round shape, the never ending circle. And if you look at, for me, the, the basic elements of what's happening in a pizza, we have fire, we have fermentation, we have community, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you look at those, like the fire fundamentally changed us as a species and as a culture and fire fundamentally changes food, um, you know, and then we come into that secondary aspect of grain, you know, the grain, good, bad, or indifferent, it figuratively literally gave us roots. It gave yeah. us a place to stay. It gave us a connection. It allowed us to build communities. It allowed us to bring artists and craftsmen and it allowed us to, to pursue things greater than food, foraging, safety, yeah. um, you know, and then and that other piece of that fermentation, you know, again, it's that fundamental transformation of food. And then and ultimately it was the first cultural expression of us because food is is a representation of culture and a culture is a representation of its people. Yeah, and people people af, af reflect and affect culture just as much as culture affects and reflects people, you know. So it's always that talk. And if we look at pizza, was really that first place where we seen that interchange of of ingredients, where you have these grains that came from Mesopotamia, you have these cheeses that came from from the near and far east, you have the herbs, the the fresh basil, those came from deeper in the Mediterranean. You have the tomato that came from Central and South America, yeah. and and you bring them all together, and you know in the this 14, 15, 1600s in, in Italy and and other, you know, if we want to get controversial, but but you know, I think we can all go on a, a limb and say that pizza as we know it today is an Italian right. food. It, right. it borrows from a lot of heritages and cultures. Kind of but converged in Italy. It, and, it converged. And yeah. it's a, but it was beautiful because you've seen the convergence of civilizations and cultures yeah. Yeah. that many hundreds and thousands of years ago. So it's just kind of that beautiful. And now it's, I mean, pizza's taken on a life of its own. Like you, you, you could take a deep dish pizza. You can take a Neapolitan flatbread pizza. You can take a, a crazy grandma pizza, right? And you've got a casserole. You have this top open face sandwich thing. And then you have what we think is a pizza, but yeah. we all call them pizzas the same thing, even though exactly. they're fundamentally different. So. so it's been not only a uh, sort of a culinary arts journey for you, but also a food anthropology journey. You were, you know, you're, you're, you're innate love of sort of making those connections and and uh and and your unique background too where the convergence of various cultures are, are all filtering through you and expressing themselves in your work which which took you from denver so you went you were in denver you you, you opened uh, pizza brava in in a i think as i could call it a vertical a vertical food court uh, or something like that what, what i forget the name of it but yeah it was, yeah so yeah we had uh we had we had a location in the food hall we had a you know, a few different other, other, uh, locations. We had the catering aspects. Um, yeah, yeah. and then, and then we had another concept that was called noble char. So it was kind of the, uh, kissed that bringing that the aspect of, of the char, the flame, but kind of uh -huh. taking it outside of the pizza realm, wow. um, on that front. Um, and then, and then, yeah, we kind of do working directly through fire within and, and all the, all the, uh, the facets from there. Um, you know, and then we, uh, the, the thing that we call the pandemic hit and, yeah. you know, good, good, bad or different. It, it uh, forced us to make a, a very hard uh, shift and a very hard uh, reboot. So yeah, we ended up, uh, we're down here in uh, Tucson, Arizona now. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big, it's a big leap over. So I want to get into that. I know you're going to give us a little tour of the, of the, of what you're creating there because it's not, it's not pizza Brava. It's a whole new enterprise totally. So I want to get, get, get you to talk a little bit about that and also, about uh, about the describe a little bit about that pie that that won the award. Uh, so I think what we'll do is um, I think we have just a couple more minutes here in segment one before we run out of time, and then we'll 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 kind of start in segment two with the with maybe a little. Are we were you planning to do a little walking tour of? of yeah, the, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about what we have going on now and kind of those the expressions of the culture and the art and how those have kind of continued with with kind of the, that trends. So journey. before we move over into that, tell, tell us what it is that you are creating. What do you what what is this new center? Yeah, so we, I mean, it's, so it's kind of taken the ideas of, of the culmination of our collective experience and and what we've put together, um, you know, and really kind of taking, you know, there's been a huge part of me that absolutely loves to teach and give back and and help people kind of on their journey as well, um, on their own personal pizza quest and their just their life's quest. And that's you know, I've had the fortunate uh, opportunity to to help hundreds and hundreds of, of up and coming pizza aiolos. And, you know, and it's a beautiful thing where we get to bring them in and it's, we, we learn pizza 101, we learn business 101, we learn wood fired cuisine 101, um, you know, and really kind of give people a crash course on giving them the tools, the fire within to be able to go out and, and 
move forward into their, into their life journey, you know? So that's the whole, you know, my, my, my passion and my purpose is give people skills that are transferable throughout their life and take these amazing people that have done amazing things, um, you know, and be able to just connect amazing people together and really highlight the journey of the artist, you know, whether that's from the culinary perspective, you know, where I got my start and my understanding to, you know, there's so many other beautiful craftsmen out there that that just go underappreciated you know with the the i think the age that we're in now where everything's got to be automated and online to be a cool kid and like there's all these things that have kind of you know a whole essentially post world war ii it's pulled us further and further away from the craftsmen where it's like let the robots let the machines let industrialization take care of it and we've lost a little bit of that nuance and i think it's that fundamental story of us and that history of us, and it gives us passion and purpose and something greater than being a cog in the machine and being a, a, a worker on an assembly line. Like there's more to life than that, uh, that perspective. So we're kind of pulling those elements together. Um, and so we, so a little bit about where we're at now, we're in Tucson, Arizona. Um, it's an incredible community that's, so it's the longest inhabited place in North America. So there's been people really? continuously living on this land for four five, six, seven thousand 7,000 years. So it's got an amazingly complex, deep food culture. It's got an amazing, complex, deep aura. And it's right at the base of the Catalina Mountains. And then so we're very desert, um, but we're in the Sonoran Desert. So you've got these epic kind of those iconic southwestern landscape, the giant saguaro cactuses and the choya. And like, it's a very rugged. And, you know, and when before we moved out here, my brain is like, we're going to the desert. Like, it's going to be like, I'm just yeah. thinking of like sand dunes and death and like just just crazy hot days. And, you know, what I learned is this place is alive. It's incredible to watch, especially this time of year. Like it blossoms, it flourishes. There's animals, there's birds. Like I think we've got one of the biggest biodiversities of birds in the, in the continental United States. So where it's just this beautiful, how about water? How do you, where does the water come from? <laughs> yeah. So that, I mean, it's, we, we're in the desert. So we sit because of our proximity to the, the Gulf of Mexico, the proximity from the Baja Peninsula, we actually get two times a year, we get what are called the monsoonal flows. Ooh. So the summer it's, it gets hot, right? I mean, we'll hit, you know, last year I was like, why did, I think we, uh, what were we, May 19th and it hit 116 degrees. And I went, what did I do? Yeah. It was like six, you know, it was just, and then once, once we hit monsoonal season, it just it's this, especially this year last year i think we got like 19 inches of rain so it was just crazy but it would get hot in the morning the summer would come and then it would rain and it's an amazing the the desert rains are such an amazing experience because it's you don't understand how fast and how much water can come out of the sky yeah and it's such a short amount of time until you sit one through one of these things and you watch you know six inches of rain fall in, in 35 minutes and you're like wow is the water collected in like cisterns like they do in other desert communities or- um, but how do you deal with the rest of the year? Is it, you know, yeah, so I mean, so it's definitely a lot of you know, it's and that's I think a, a, a it's a it's a bigger problem for for the desert southwest. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a it's a very water forward community. So looking at you know, we do have like water captured systems uh, because of our monsoonal flows. We get we have some decent water tables that still su- suffice. Um, so we have a, a fair amount of groundwater that's still available to us. And but it definitely is you know it's the desert and it's something we have yeah. to be cognizant and conscious of going into that. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, the fact that people have been living there for thousands of years, we know that, that it can work <laughs> and if, if you have the right people and not too many of them. But uh, and then and, and but always we know you got to have water. So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that you've got systems. Are there any underground uh, sources like wells and things like that that also provide? Aquifer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's definitely aquifers and there's wells, and you know, and I think that's that's something now because you look at the like the, the especially places like Las Vegas and Phoenix, and because even though we're an hour and a half south of Phoenix, we've got an entire different climate than, than what they have. Um, you know, we're we're yeah. a fair amount cooler, we're a fair amount more comfortable. So, you know, but again, a big portion of the water that's happening is coming down the Colorado River. Colorado Rivers. It's 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 struggling right now to keep up with with such a broad expansion because, like you said, with the manageable amount of people, you yeah, know, and, people, yeah. And, and I think the the hardest part where they're experiencing it the most is agriculture, um, you know, because it's a lot of 
a lot of kind of those industrial revolution agricultural techniques that weren't necessarily concerned about conservation of water. Right. It was just rip open the land, throw some seeds on it, throw some fertilizer on it, throw some water on it. And, yeah. you know, so it's, it's amazing to watch the, you know, there, there's a lot of amazing forward thinking farmers that are out there that are looking at not our problems. Now they're looking at the problems of the future and they're looking at the next generational problems and they're saying, how do we do it better? How do we make an impact now? So maybe we don't realize these things in our short lifetime, but yeah. the next generation is we're we're not going to pa- we're not going to cross over that that tipping point where the point of no return. And you know, so I think the, the big part is 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 conservation and understanding. It's the capturing. I mean, we get tax credits to be able to um, you know like they'll give us money to go out and build systems that'll catch water. They'll build they'll they'll build systems to where we can build essentially reverse ponds so we can pool as much of the water when it does rain um, just to be able to use it for irrigation and stuff. So, Well, I, I love the fact that, you know, what you're doing is because you know, Pizza Quest is not just about pizza. We always say it's a celebration of artisanship <laughs> wherever we find it. And that's really what you are. You are creating a center that celebrates artisanship on all fronts. All, and, and, and I know you've got a lot of connections. You're building community within the grain growers, the, you know, the, 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 the folks who are environmentally conscious sustainability communities you know you're 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 expanded way beyond pizza in fact i'm wondering are you still even doing pizza (laughs) so why don't we come back in part two and we'll take a little tour you'll show us what you're doing you'll talk about the pizza that you the pizza and pizzas that you're are creating still because i know you still have a hand in that but it's more than that now what you have is uh, is what do you do you have a name for for the center that you're going to take us through um yeah so we're we're still kind of figuring out the the exact name i mean i think the uh the the it's probably going to be silver linings um wow. and just kind of that that, wow. that beautiful piece and yeah. on that so and uh yes yeah, so how much time do we have do we want to switch over or do we want to yeah why don't we why don't we take a break here we'll come beautiful. back with, uh because uh you know we live in the zoom world where <laughs> we only get 45 minutes and and our, we try to keep our segments about 20 minutes each so we'll come back with a fresh a fresh slate and uh, and get a tour and and continue you know kind of hearing about your journey and where it's all leading and and I and and I'm not going to forget that I want you to tell us about that pizza that you want <laughs> okay absolutely so, uh, join us back in part two with Tommy Garnick uh, coming to us from Tucson Arizona now some of you know him from Phoenix some of you uh, probably have had his pizza but uh, now a whole new journey begins in Tucson we'll be back in part two perfect we'll see you shortly. Thanks. Stick around for more Pizza Quest after a word from our sponsor. I'm Chaba Perivan, co host of Agave Road Trip on HRN, here to talk about 818 Tequila. 818 creates their tequila using traditional methods that a family owned and operate distillery in Jalisco, Mexico. From the blue agave they grow to their recycled glass bottle, 818 emphasizes the Earth's importance in all they do. Their distillery runs on biomass and solar power, which means they don't rely as much on fossil fuels and are able to reduce their carbon footprint. Their labels, corks, and boxes are all certified by the Forest Stewardship Council as coming from sustainability-managed forests. 818 is a proud member of 1% for the Planet, through which they support HRN as well as Sacred my organization in Jalisco, where together we transform agave byproducts and water waste into adobe bricks that are donated to local infrastructure projects, like a local library in Zapotitlan de Vadillo. Visit drink818.com to learn more about their sustainability efforts and find 818 near you. 818 has been part of so many magical nights for me, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. 818 tequila imported by 818 Spirits, Manhasset, New York. 40% alcohol by volume, drink responsibly. Welcome back to Pizza Quest. And I'm with Tommy Garnick in Tucson, Arizona. And we're about to get to see the Silver Linings playbook (laughs) here. Uh, Tommy, uh, we were talking about uh, whether you are still doing pizza. Silver Linings is, uh, we're calling it that at least for now until you finalize that, that name, but I love it. Hope, hope you can keep that one. Um, uh, and we, you know, I had mentioned a number of times that you won awards for your pizza. You, you know, had the pizza operation. So are you still going to be doing pizza in this new artisan center that we've been calling Silver Linings? 
Yeah, so we're we're uh, working on kind of some creative ways to be able to to uh, to to be able to do that. I mean, it's not only is it going to be uh, you know this essentially the the idea behind behind the the center that we're creating is kind of uh, a old uh, Greek. Uh, philosophy called an agora so it's just kind of a communal center where you bring like these amazing thought leaders together and and kind of artisans and craftsmen from all shapes and forms and and sizes so it's going to be a center where we're going to be able to do you know because right now so yes we're still doing pizza uh we do (laughs) a lot of a lot of catering and then also we're doing uh some some kind of super secret underground supper clubs so still playing with the elements of the fire and Uh and kind of pushing beyond the the elements of of just pizza so pizza is always always a part of that and that's that edible journey and then also just kind of the other things that fire can transform and and those you know those it seems those like things. fire and, is really going to be the central theme of this i mean yeah i mean it's fire and fermentation right i mean the, the two fundamental elements that that kind of change those together and you know and the things that we're really excited about now is this such a new diverse culture of what's happening in the desert and there's you know we've got new types of mesquite flowers and these like grains that just they they, they react differently and we have um uh, cactus seeds that create this interesting crunch and textural element. We have the cactus fruits, um, you know, that just have these vibrant colors and these sweet. And then you know, the things we do incredibly well, we have date palms. So we've got friends that own the date farms out of that are out there. So we go out and harvest fresh dates and, and citrus is a really beautiful thing. And, you know, so it's an amazing climate that's very similar to what you would look in like Israel. So the, the, the elements that you can see there are kind of those fundamental foods of, of, of cultivation. Um, you know, so pomegranates and figs and those types of things all grow exceptionally well out here. Um, you know, and then the, and kind of getting back into right before we we left Denver, we'd gotten into beekeeping actually. Um, so we're excited to get our our bees up and going. So yeah, we're we're taking kind of these new these new foods and techniques and ideas and and kind of incorporating that into um you know the other facet of pizza is we're still consulting we're still teaching we're still doing those those elements that really be it enabled us to do that and then just working on kind of the next project I'm excited about is you know it's we're an amazing time and age and all the crazy kids on on TikTok and and it, Technology's changed so fast to what it used to take me to do to make an amazing wood fired pizza was a fifteen thousand dollar oven it took me two and a half hours to get it hot for to cook three pizzas you know yeah. and now we, we have this prominence of these these you know prosumer ovens i call them but these two three four five hundred dollar pizza ovens yes. that make amazing world-class pizza i can warm it up in 20 minutes um you know so we're getting in and creating some training mechanisms to be able to to find the, those people that are getting into those smaller setups Yes. And give them tools and techniques and ideas to be able to go out and turn that into a, a sustainable business and and open that door up to give them some new possibilities and some new opportunities and and uh, on from on, on from that facet and then also uh, you know I've been talking with you a little bit on finally getting out and and writing a couple books and telling you know nice. a little nice. of the journey like you yeah. said I've kind of become this like that that cultural kind of anthropological transformation of yeah. food and grain and pizza and so yeah, you've kind of getting it there. You, you, you have a, a, an important story to tell and now it's just a, a matter of bringing the same uh you know craft and artisanship to the storytelling as to the cooking and and the absolutely teaching. and so um, so are you are where are you sitting now is that is that like you know, in, 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 in as part of the center, is this an office? Yeah, this is, so this is going to actually be kind of the heart of the center. Um, it's going to be an indoor outdoor space. So this here is going to turn into a, you know, it's going to, so the other piece that we've transformed into, um, let's see, sorry, I'm just getting my, my phone ready. So when we go yeah. mobile here in a right, second, going a little journey um, here, yeah. yeah, we'll go on a little journey. So yeah, just to kind of preference where we're at, this is going to be kind of the heart of the center. Um, so, you know, when we moved out to Tucson, we actually got into, uh, into tile, um, you know, um, and, Wow. The tile of all things. Ceramic tiles? Ceramic. I mean, yes. But what we got into is much more of it's it's artisan handmade, uh, fully customizable art pieces. Oh, so awesome. we're, you know, and, and it was it was amazing. It's just an opportunity that had kind of happened. And once once you start to really look at it, the 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 parallels are strikingly similar. You know, with with the tile maker, they're taking earth and transforming it by fire. They're molding it with their hands. They're creating this beautiful piece of living art that that goes on. And it's something that's, you know, it was the it was the probably one of the first 
senses of artistic expression that ex- that lasts from you know because they were they were baked they were killed fired or they're yeah. baked in a fire so they didn't weather like everything else that weathers um you know so we, we we've had this amazing opportunity and it's it's reconnected with these you know we have artisans that are a husband and wife that work out of their garage that are you know you call them up and we don't know how long it's going to take until we call them like hey what's what's you know what does this look like and you know so we we highlight these artisans from all over the united states and a little bit kind of a, abroad as well that are making just these stunning pieces so um so this is going to kind of become a, a convergence of all of these things so we're going to have the food we're going to have the art we're going to have that so where we're sitting now is kind of going to be the heart the interior space of, of where that's at um and then it, this will kind of be a, a design studio an event space a teaching facility a, a pop-up dinner facility i'm um, kind of all encompassed into one place and it'll be indoor outdoor um on that front so it's 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 in the process of becoming what it's going to be it, um, it is every day fact, well, since a lot of the people who are uh, listening to this are are on the uh, audio podcast they may not be able to see what you're going to be showing us on the video podcast <clears throat> so i'll describe along with you uh is uh, try to paint as much of a picture as we can of what uh, of what you're showing us absolutely and then so i'm going to switch over here to uh take us mobile and we'll just kind of i'll talk through what we're looking at and okay and how we're doing this Make so sure. while you're doing that um uh i know that uh this it's interesting that you're doing these this tile aspect of the of the center is, <laughs> and i'm guessing that you know this is something that is connected to the history of the area as well has there been kind of a heritage of of tile work in this part either in tucson itself or in the various in the south southwest region that you're finding yourself in yeah so we're we're, you see it a lot and especially kind of the so this this area that we go kind of this sonoran Mm -hmm. desert extends deep into into mexico all the way into um kind of the uh into the into the uh the bays down there um you know, so you see a lot of that prominence of those cultural pieces and you know it's fired ceramics so you see the pottery you see the the tile you see all those pieces of elements that are you know and fundamentally they're one of the, our first expressions that we were able to uh to be able to uh to form on there all right now we're yeah now we're seeing a whole different space than where you were sitting which is more of an office with books behind you a lot of good pizza books i recognize that around over your right shoulder uh <laughs> What's and now we're in, longer? looks like a center. Can you, my my voice is coming through echoing though. Technology. There All it right. is. Can you, okay. We got, we got sound. We got image. So this we're ready is, to roll. <laughs> so this here is going to be the heart of the, uh, of the space that we're uh, transforming into that idea. So this will, this will take us into that front. So this will be, like I said, kind of design studio, event space, um, classroom uh, setting, kind of going into that front um, on that. Um, yeah, and yeah, those are like I said, the the books are are what uh, what what it's made this journey all possible. And I think honestly, one of your books, uh, your original Pizza Quest book, was one of the ones that really kind of got oh, me excited nice. about pizza and like ma- ma- let me know that it was more to than just sitting on the line and flour, water, water, salt, yeast in a mixer and slapping <laughs> it around. And so it so kind of made it. Uh, what I'm looking at now is uh, over uh, like a sofa, that, uh, and there's the bookcase. Is yeah. that where you were sitting? When we were talking. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. This was this was us right here. So I was just okay, there we go. Okay, so that's where you're sitting. Yeah. So and then, yeah, but that so was like you said, were in a in a much larger room than it looked like you were just in exactly. a small office, but you were in a much yep. larger room yeah, than this we're now is, seeing. And and this is where a lot of the what a lot of the work will happen is right there, like the gathering. Yep. So that'll be kind of the indoor. So we're gonna turn it into an indoor outdoor space. So the the big work that has to happen is gonna be out here, kind of transforming the the lot out here. So yeah, this, this guy out here, so we'll, we'll turn this into uh, a flow. So this is kind of a, a mural that we got painted it for the homage of kind of that's, the crass woman. And, that's on the side of a, uh, is, what would, is that a shed or is that a... An it's a yeah, it, it, it'll be, so that'll be kind of our more solid workshop. Um, so it'll happen and then just kind of got this beautiful, iconic desert Southwest look. So out here, we're going to uh, change the space. So we're going to bring in some fruit trees, kind of those, we'll get some figs, we'll get pomegranate, a couple of a lemon, lime, and a couple of different types of oranges um, that'll kind of anchor the space. And then this will actually be a door. So we'll, we'll pull this open. Um, the dream is I'm actually, we're going to take a, uh, an old kind of like a 1930s, 1940s pickup truck and mount a pizza oven to the back of it. And uh-huh. that'll be kind of a focal point that'll sit on that wall right there. Uh, that'll be kind of the, the, the homage. And then we'll take and yeah, this space, like I said, it's going to come out alive with a lot of greenery, a lot of, uh, a lot of just kind of iconic 
southwest uh, look and feel. And then we're going to be building a full scale commercial kitchen into the uh, facet of this guy. Um, that'll awesome. that'll allow us to be able to do the teaching, the catering, um, the events. Uh, oh, oh my God. Yeah, so you've you've walked uh, back into the center, and then so, that's where yep. the kitchen will be. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the kitchen we're actually going to do it'll be outside, back behind. Uh, we can we can do a oh, quick screen outdoor background. kitchen. Yeah, so we'll we'll do. Um, we're either we're we're still kind of deciding. We might actually take so back in the lot extends quite a bit back further that way as well. Uh, so we're looking at potentially doing a uh, shipping container and converting that into our uh, commercial kitchen um, from that front. Um, that makes and sense. Then that yeah. Way. yeah, and then we'll kind of have done that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that was a big thing in Denver when I last time I was there was the shipping yeah. container uh, food courts. <laughs> yep, exactly. And we well, we want still the, all those elements, but like I said, it kind of gives it it makes the build out and the uh, bringing a kitchen a little bit easier online. It allows us to uh, to get going without the without quite the mechanical build out because we can fully build that 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 facility off site and bring it, drop it in, plumb it, it plug it into electrical, plug it into power, and it's yeah. ready to go. Well, you can really get a sense when, as you were walking around, and I'm, you know, I felt like I'm right there in in the desert, you know, in in a, in a space with a lot of potential, and I can't wait to like come back, um, maybe you know, in a few months or next year when it's all all fleshed out and the, uh, you know, the gardens are growing and the trees are growing and and uh, the ovens are in place. It's it's like we're see we're getting a sneak preview of of an idea that. Um, you know, that's just being born in front of our very eyes, it seems like. Yeah. And then we'll do a quick kind of tour into, so this is actually fronted on the front of our, uh, of our space here is going to be our artisan tile shop. So we'll go kind of look at some of the pretty uh, pieces that we have there. Oh, well. good. You have some tiles? Yeah, I was wondering oh, about yeah. that. So we're moving so into our, another room and here's the tile yeah. shop. Here, here's, here's the back office. So this, this is my <laughs> lovely partner, Danny, that helps me make all this, uh, and then this right. is one of our one of our wonderful designers, uh, Veronica, as well. Hey, um, everybody. Oh, so yeah. So these. The so yeah. yeah. So this is so these guys here. So this is a, a woman out of New Mexico. So each one of these pieces is hand fired, hand painted, hand drawn. So it's just an amazing work of art and artistry that goes into each of these. Um, this is another company, similar style, that comes out of uh, Southern California. Um, these guys kind of do a, a retro, it's called the revival series. So this is paying homage to kind of the anywhere from mid-century modern to a little bit more classic. Um, this is a, a three, a third, a three generation woman business that's out of the Pacific Northwest. Grandma, mom, and the daughter all work in the business. Every one of these tiles is hand painted, um, you know, and they have hundreds of colors. So we could take the same tile and say, hey, we like this design, but we want to use these colors and they'll custom make these orders kind of for each and every one of us the tiles um, are very mandala like and uh and seem like they they tap into you know sort of ancient patterns and, and so especially yeah i mean that's you know and that's the amazing thing of watching these artists you know i guess that uh, steal like an artist right you take those ideas and those and just you reinvent it and reimagine it this is another yeah. company a little bit different style but these are actually hand painted here in arizona um, on these really thick, uh, so these so the tile bodies are actually made in Mexico, and then they paint them here in in Arizona. So you just see a lot of beautiful art and, right. so and design, a technique, and and really really nice colors, different, uh, very you know, vibrant. And you yeah. look every manufacturer. This is a husband and wife that are out of uh, Southern Utah, and every manufacturer just has it's a different style. Um, different body, different. There's just so much passion and love and technique and ideas that go into each and every one of these 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 passions. And that's you know, for me, what I fell in love with when we started doing this, it's so much similar to what's happening in the in the food industry and what's happening with all these amazing chefs that are that are doing things. You know, these are the same type of people. You know, they're they they they're passionate about what they do. They put in the time. They put in the sweat. They put in the the tears and that's you know it's an amazing thing to watch you know when you you call him up and i remember we had uh, an order from a gentleman i mean he literally he's got a little shop at the back of his property and it was a pretty large order and he's like oh this is a great one we love this this will keep the lights on for a few weeks yeah, right, <laughs> I was like exactly. that's, so, you know and i was so, like that that beckons back to you know well, these, that, these are like the, the, the kindred spirits of uh, the artisan community the greater artisan community so so the center there uh, at Silver Lines, you are like a showroom 
for a number of artists from around the country, not just locals, but from you're bringing them in, bringing in pieces from all over. Is that correct? Am I, am yeah. We... So we're we're these are you know who we consider to be some of the best artisans you know in in the country. So we we seek out people that have an amazing story, an amazing product, and you know be able to to bring that design um, to everybody, you know, and take their work and be able to share it with with the mash. And then I'll just show you. So we're at the base of these are the Catalina Mountains. So oh, yeah, that's kind of, the, looking then, at the mountains now. Yeah, yeah, we can see a couple of little cactuses hide behind a power pole there. Yeah. And then so this will be as you come in, this this is kind of the uh the front uh front kind of entrance into the into into the center and then we'll have a kind of a side entrance built in as well that gives us that, and that you've look got and that feel. Parking, I see ample parking and uh are you already doing commerce there? Are customers coming or consumers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So we've right? had the yeah, the tile shop we've had open for uh, about eh, I want to say eighteen months now. Oh, wow. um, yeah. so yeah, this guy we've we we we've got a full full load full design team um, that kind of come in and and um, yeah that that come through these doors. A couple of our doggies here. Don't I mind. Your dog. Yeah, you gotta have a dog. Yeah. Uh, well, let me <laughs> so ask there, you this. There, there's uh, actually three of them. So. Three dogs. I see two now. Yeah. Uh, are you? Um, also, do you have an online presence? Like, if people can't get to you to to what is it called, Artisan? Is that the name of the studio there? Um, yeah, I mean, you can see uh, obviously on the, the Instagram Artisan a Tile at Artisan a Tile. So it's A R T E S A N A Tile dot com. My partner Dan, uh, Danny, she does an amazing job kind of curating uh, some of the things that we do and and how we do them. And then um, and then some of the other are uh, some of our other catering. Um, we've got a couple of facets. The one that we keep most up to date uh, for catering right now is our, um, it's called Graze and Provisions. So that's kind of our, that was our first pivot into, into COVID was charcuterie. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so she, she's an amazing food stylist. So check those out. I mean, just amazing work. And watching all this can be found. Let me repeat it for those who didn't catch it the first time. Artisana, A-R-T-E-S-A-N-A, correct? Artisana.com. Artisanatile.com. Artisanatile.com. So check that out. Yeah. And then you can see you'll and I'll do the same when I when we when we finish recording. I'm gonna go look at the site. Um and so you so people can actually uh, do some shopping there with you from wherever they are. Yep. Yeah, they can see and just importantly, kind of check the style that our team is is curating. And you know, yeah. we've got a couple of amazing designers on the team that get out and you know, and that's kind of where our culture is. So we're back, we're back now uh where we started the tour. And we're we're as we're come close to the end of our time, I uh I'm excited about what you're building. And like I said, I can't wait till we come back and continue to see it flesh out over time. And I'm hoping to that I'll be able to get out there and do some, you know, visiting. Yeah, no, yeah, no, we, I know we've been talking offline, and yeah, definitely want to get out and yeah. have you out and do do a Love couple of classes, some kind and, of an event of some sort. Yeah, we, and and uh, you know, you and I have worked together before, uh, and I'd love to cook with you again. Uh, oh, you know, I would, I would in, love it in some in some form or another. Um, and we have some crazy things to play with bread. Like I said, we've got mesquite flour and cactus yeah. seeds and and all kinds of all kinds of unique funky things that we can that we can really kind of play with and 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 kind of experience and and get to make some really fun bread. Really connected to a lot of uh growers too farm uh uh you know unique regional farmers who are growing uh spe regionally specific grains and things like that. Absolutely. So so tell us before we run out of time a little bit about the pizza um, uh, if I'm, if I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting the factor, but it was, I think the California, um, um, cheese board or milk board, uh, uh, annual pizza competition, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we did, uh, the, yeah, the year that we had entered, it was kind of my, my, uh, you know, it was my synergy. So I actually did a, um, a Mexican inspired pizza. So it was one of, one of the, cal uh, one of the categories, um, you know, and so for me, it was kind of brought me back to my, my childhood and my heritage. And again, that taking the idea of pizza and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all connected. It's all pulled together. So we wanted to take that. So we kind of, I played with the idea of a soap of pizza. So I actually took and, and, and changed the dough, my dough formulation just a little bit. I actually had a little bit of masa into it. Oh, nice. Oh. And I actually fried it before I put it in the oven to kind of give it that, like a, 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 a soap of pia, almost like texture and oh. flavor and, and, and flavor into it. So the dough um, was fried, the whole dough did, was fried. Yep, I did a, a quick, really quick fry on the dough. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. um, just to get it to puff up and give me that real nice. And then I, yeah, I actually finished it in the wood fired oven. So I kind of, kind of pulled both, uh, both together to do it. Um, and then we did, uh, so I did carnitas. So I bet I did it two ways. I did one that was a kind of a, a roasted, um, a stewed. So it shredded. And then I did a spit roasted one as well. Um, so we've played with one with a green sauce, one with the red sauce, and then, um, yeah, just a couple different cheeses. And then we did a, a mole for it, a salsa verde, and then just kind of finish it up with some, some flavor texture, um, crunch and, it was an amazing, amazing pizza. It wasn't one that was a pizzeria pizza. It was uh, way too many, th way too many elements and way too much time to make it. But it was, it was great for a competition. It's a great, co yeah, exactly. And and as I recall seeing when they announced the winners, I saw the photo of it, uh, and of course wanted to just have one immediately. Uh, but yeah, like you, I think what you hit on there, what you were describing is number one, flavor. Obviously, flavor is king. But also, you you know did something unique with the crust aside from frying it which is always going to make things taste great but then adding some uh some masa to that bringing some corn elements into that into the crust must have really given it you know kind of a a wonderful uh almost tamale like you know quality and then um and then textures you were talking about textures and i so that idea of working with uh, again, if I if I'm just trying to repeat what you said, some uh, uh, two types of pork. You were you, the stewed and the roasted. Plus, I, I'm guessing some skin on there. Oh yeah, we had a little <laughs> little uh, little chicharron on top as part of the, the oh texture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it sounds awesome. So, uh, so I know they had categories of of, of awards, and there was money involved, which was great because uh, when I saw that, if I if I recall, did, did you guys did you win like grand prize for this pizza? Yeah, yeah, we won. So yeah, we had won the category and then the grand prize. So yeah, that was an amazing experience. I think the uh, it was I got two of the I'm going to Disney World checks, and I think oh. were, what one was for five thousand, and one was for ten thousand. So it was beautiful. A, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad bad day making pizza. That 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 probably was a real shot in the arm for you know for moving into this new vision of yours as well. Yeah, yeah. We actually at the, at the time I'd used it and bought a uh, bought bought a new pizza oven. So it's one that that we still have that hasn't uh, that hasn't been used yet. So. Oh, can't wait! Uh, are you allowed to continue to re-enter or not? Do you have to kind of like retire? Um, so yeah, I think it, it was a, a two year hiatus, um, and then so yeah, we'll I'll, I'll, I'll re-enter last year. This year was a little bit uh, um, a little bit a little bit uh crunch because we were, were we had just we bought a new house as well so yeah. we're moving into that and we just got done i spent a week out at pizza expo and we've got the, the the renovations that are happening here so had to run around a little bit so we'll we'll take it a breather and we'll, well if listeners want to uh follow up on the pizza where would they go what website would they go to is that california milk advisory uh board? yeah so it was put on the california milk uh, advisory board um i think it's uh, i'm trying to remember the website offhand i'll i can send you a, a link to that and if you want to post that in the uh in the footer notes of the okay. of the webisode when you post it then they, okay. they'll be able to get it there and in the meantime if you're just listening to this randomly and you want to just check it out. Just go to California Milk Advisory Pizza Contest, though, <laughs> and it'll probably get you there eventually. And then, which year? This was not the most recent one. This was two years ago when you won. Yeah, I think uh, 2019. 2019. So, so look yep. for that. And of course, there's lots of very cool pizzas that are showcased there. But so everybody who entered and won was doing something extraordinary. And then for you to to kind of win the grand prize, uh, best in show, so to speak, is uh, is, is kudos and and uh, you know perfect for your you know to to for your what's the word i'm looking for to your bona fides you know you, <laughs> no yeah i appreciate it that's amazing opportunity i mean there's some amazing pizza chefs and i always say in the competition you know it's it's yes every chef, every chef there on any given day has the potential to win and it's just you have the right pizza on the right day for the right judges and you know you you, you tell that story because at those at, at those competitions that uh, you you there's i don't want to say you leave a lot to chance but there's a lot of variables that are outside of your control that can happen and you know you just you, you go along for the journey it's a ton of fun it's it's a camaraderie with other amazing amazing pizzas and you know i love going just to watch what other pizza chefs are doing and you know watching the 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 prominence of what makes me excited now is like where us chefs are are borrowing from the playbooks of bakers and borrowing from the likes of you peter and the, yeah. the work that you've done for 20 years and we're like cool let's blend yeah. ingredients in the dough together to 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 curate that 
taste and texture and crunch and bite. And, you know, and now we're like, oh, well, this pizza doesn't necessarily travel well. What can we do to make it an amazing bite now, but also to be able to sit in a pizza box for 30 minutes and still be an amazing pizza? Oh, that would be the holy grail if you could do that. (laughs) And that's, you know, but it's amazing watching people taking those creative leaps and those, and those, you know, it's the same thing that happens anytime. Sometimes you jump off a cliff and you go, whoops, should have packed a better parachute. And, you know, you you, you push too far, but you learn so much every time. That's that's the amazing thing. And when you see what can, can be done, it inspires you to try to oh, do something that's yeah, way I mean, outside your comfort zone. Yeah. Every day. And that's and that's what, like I said, I love I love the the social media for that effect. I mean, you see these people that they're just at home pizza makers. And so they don't they don't have the preconceived notions that I have and these limits that I place on myself because I have a set of rules I follow. They're just out doing something and they do it. And you're like, wow, I need to like that's pretty awesome. I would have never have thought that because I have a regimented set of rules that I've created for myself because I've been doing it so long. And yeah, it's yeah, amazing exactly. just to watch people like shake me out of my little slumber a little bit. Like, oh, wait, look, look what is possible. And yeah, because they, they're thinking about it from a totally different angle. What, what, what uh, People may want to know this, especially if they're thinking, hey, hey, how can I enter a contest like this? First, I would imagine you had to send in a photo and a recipe that you created, you know, at your home site. But then did you then have to go to a a sort of a, a, a throwdown at the end where you had to execute it in front of the judges? Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was a two part. So theirs was inspiration pizza. So you, you had to tell you know a little bit about what the pizza was, what it represent, what's the inspiration of the pizza, obviously a beautiful photo, the recipe, and then it was their blind judged ahead of time. So they take a bunch, they take um, six or eight culinary professionals, um, a couple of judges, a couple of people that are good and they go through the recipes and, you know, they, they say, does this, does this work on paper? How does this, you know, does this sound like something I want to eat? And then they narrow it down to the, the top competitors. And then, yeah, we went out and did a, a live competition and, you know, and it's, it's always, and the competitions are fun because you never know what's going to happen when I showed up for, we, we were supposed to have a shopping list of things that were there. They didn't arrive. So then we, we had to jump in the car and run the whole foods and kind of recreate that the recipe this? on the fly. Where do they um, have Napa, these? Napa, yeah. California. Napa okay. Valley, so. Hey, not bad. So a trip to Napa, <laughs> a little bit of prize money, get a, get a chance to cook, you know, with some with some uh, some some talented people, and uh, and then go head to head. It's, uh, it's uh, for those who are um, who who have the ambition. Uh, keep your eye out for the next round. I think they just yeah. I think they yeah, just they, completed one, didn't they? They they just closed up the submissions, um, and I think they're 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 working on the judging portion now, and then. Um, yeah, here, here relatively soon, they'll be doing the live competition. So the, the, the top uh, pizza aiolis that are, that are going in and, you know, that's one of many, many competitions that are out there. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, you've got your basic ones that happen at the, the international pizza expo. And that's kind of the, yeah. you know, a very high class, high caliber. And then there's one up and when they do the, the pizza and pasta up in the, in the Northwest. And then there's Atlantic always a bunch of regional like, ones yeah, as well. Yeah. We've got one coming up in Atlantic city in October. Well, but the main thing I wanted to say with, from all that is for, for for those of you who have an interest in, in maybe entering something like this or wondering how they can, you can get into it, definitely go back and look at the past winners and look at the, the ways that other people who have already done well, uh, you know, scored their points in doing it and get inspiration from that before you just enter into it. Uh, know what you're getting into and, <laughs> and, know that, and know that, you know, you may be able to uh, make, make it at home uh, where you have, you know, everything at your hand, but then think about, okay, how would I execute this if I'm going to a strange kitchen? Uh, even if it's a good kitchen, uh, you know, in front of judges where the pressure is really on. Pressure's there, oven stop working, equipment that you think should, basic equipment you think should be there is not there. And you've got to make a pizza box into a pizza peel. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> we, we, we've seen it all. You know, luckily I came from a, a very large catering background. So that teaches you very rapidly how to think on the fly. And because, you know, it's, it's life, things happen. And, you know, it's, no matter how well you plan, there's always going to be, a variable you never thought to, to, to account for. And, you know, so it, it's, they're, they're a lot of fun. And like I said, and, you know, have fun with it. Don't take it too yeah. serious because again, it's every, every person that goes to these competitions are amazing, amazing competitors. And on any given day, any one of them can win. And again, my philosophy is it's the right piece on the right day for the right judges. And, you know, just be, make the best thing you can make and be proud of it. You know, you're there That's for the cool. experience. You're there for the exposure. You're there to meet these amazing other pizza makers and make just lifelong friends. So. Exactly. Well, congratulations on that, on your success with that. And also, you know, in terms of what you were just describing, the ability to, to, you know, to, to make it work, to do whatever it takes to get it done, (laughs) uh, whether it's turning a pizza box into a pizza peel or whatever, but what you're doing now, creating a new center in Tucson, Arizona, 
that is, in a sense, you know, evolving in front of our eyes from, uh, as I'll just use my my verbiage for it would be, you know, a center that celebrates artisanship in all sorts of forms, um, both culinary and in crafts and life. Uh, and uh, this is going to be uh, a, a big project for you and look for all different ways to support it. For people who want to, again, just for those who would like to uh, stay in touch with this, uh, it's artisan. Let me just make sure I'm saying it right. Artisana tile tile artisana tile dot com. And what about uh, so you haven't um, yet decided on silver linings as the name of the center yet? That's still kind of being debated now. Um, yeah, we're yeah. I mean, we're just going through our due diligence and seeing you know the, the intellectual pieces and, and the, sure the no branding pieces and the LLC pieces and the business pieces so yeah i mean provided that everything looks like we can we can yeah. make that happen i mean that's the that's you don't that's want our... bradley cooper shutting you down and saying, <laughs> exactly Wait a second, I yeah exactly <laughs> yeah but, yeah but, have but, to come but, out and rebrand and i, I know um, you're yeah, gonna make them happen yeah and usually i mean i'm not as active as much now but zen of zaz my personal uh instagram handle so you can kind of see what's going up there what is it again Zen of Za, so Z E N of Z A A. Zen so, of Za, Z A A. Okay, Zen of Za, and that's uh, on Instagram. I didn't even that's know that. A, I got to write that down. Okay, so uh, on the Insta, same Brava Pizzas. Insta is still up and in running. Um, Grays and provisions. Yeah, the one artisanal tiles. So we, uh, yeah, we we sleep a lot. So. <laughs> Tommy, it's been great seeing you again, catching up and seeing what you're creating out there in Tucson. It's inspirational. It's exciting. And, uh, you know, I wish you the best of success. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Absolutely. And, I, you know, th- thank you so much for allowing us to, to bring a little bit of our journey and our passion um, and, and share with, with your viewerships. I mean, you've I know you've you've had a huge impact on my life, Peter, and I greatly appreciate that. And, and please keep up the good work you're, you're, you're doing. I mean, I love to see that. Um, you know, the, the new books and you're transitioning you. into your next chapter. So I'm extremely well, excited to see. I, we're to all see in this together. Like. That's what I love about this, uh, you know, this this tribe that we're that keeps growing around us. Uh, and if we ever get to a volume two of the Pizza Quest book, I, I think <laughs> we're, you're going to have now that you've been uh, one of the criteria is you had to be interviewed on the show. But we now we can get you one of your pizzas into the next book. Maybe the one. I don't know if they'll let us show that case. Showcase that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we, we could we could we could put it when I rebuilt the recipe for the uh, California pizza kitchen. It's uh, like I said, that one's about a five day process to get everything together and everything done. So right, we, exactly. we, we could we can make a condensed one that's a little more uh, you, a little more user friendly for the home cook. Yeah. Well, I, I don't doubt it. And uh, or you could just do something totally different. I know it's going to be great because I've had your food, Tommy. I'll see you again wherever our paths cross back here on Pizza Quest, maybe in Atlantic City, maybe in at Pizza Expo, or most hopefully in Tucson. Well, and hopefully we can do the next interview right here, just the two of us in the center we'll, after we get done teaching a class. and Do it live. We can, walk, awesome. we can walk through it together. So Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's the success. And for all of you who are with us today, thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next edition, the next episode <laughs> of Pizza Quest. Thank you. Thank you again, Peter. Take it easy. This show is powered by Simplecast. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. Keep in touch at heritageradionetwork.org slash subscribe.